course, the Bays are kicking to the southern end and it's favoured by a breeze. Ivan Eckerman playing in his 150th game for Port. Carey and Robertson. Clifford with a quick kick, didn't go all that far. McDermott with a high one. Ebert from the back. Quick handball away by Simons. Fedke's at centre half forward, Bruce. Belton's kick not all that far. And in fact, it goes to Russell. Dwayne Russell goes towards the centre. Curtis has got it. Curtis back after being injured with a hamstring. And Curtis kicking in, uh, in the middle of a sea of paper. Very high in the air. He comes down with the breeze now. Spoiled away though from Simons. Back there by, his own, by Salisbury rather, from Salisbury. So it's a bounce down. A bit of confusion there between Salisbury and teammate. Bounce down. Carey knocking it away wide. Anderson tripped up, but he doesn't get it. McGuinness trying to follow the full ball through. There's a player being bumped, I thought, but pushed in the bump in the back. So there'll be a free kick to Port Adelaide, and that will be taken by Milan Folletti. A lot of paper on the ground, unfortunately. Flying all down to the southern end, coming from the northern end, and Folletti deep in the pocket. A very difficult kick. It's not the right place to be kicking into the breeze today. He's kicked quite a few goals this season. Got very close to the man on his mark. And kicks are behind. So Port score first. They didn't draw a lot of blood, but they got a point. The Bay's yet to score. So Michael Farquhar. Straight up the centre of the ground, slightly to the grandstand side. Kinnear can't complete the mark. He's positioned himself well. Curtis making position in short. It's a dangerous kick. It would have paid to go to the top. McFarland's intercepted at the Holst. Holst to centre half forward. And Fetke's there on his own. Juggles the mark. And it would have paid him to the front over the back of a pack. Ebert picks it up. He should never have dropped it. But McFarland's there again. The ever reliable McFarland. Peter Carey. To full forward. Kernahan. Oh, good mark. They love him here at Glenelg. The young champ was the old champ of the young champ, Kerry to Kernahan. And oh, what an important kick. The Tigers want a good start. They want Kernahan to put this one through the middle. And he has. The Bay's in front. They're a goal, quarter point. And it's John McFarlane on two occasions then, holding up the defensive action. Carl Fedke making a bad error at centre-half forward, very loose on the take early in the game, um, probably just needing that little bit of touch. Russell Ebert rebounded it back to McFarlane. McFarlane got it forward again, and Kernham with a splendid mark and a wonderful kick. Carey and Johnston all directly run against one another here. Carey got the tap in the end. Belton, Curtis, Duthie, McDermott, it's going to be a free kick and it's going to go to Danny Hughes who's playing at centre half forward. Had a real mixture of a season. State full back last year. Timed that ball beautifully. Evans one out. Well done Farquhar. Hubbard has almost got him. Yeah, that was a good take wasn't it Bruce by um, Holst. Holst. Yes. Superb as he goes to the outer side. It's Anderson and also Salisbury. Salisbury did well. On Duthie rather it was. Now Maynard. Maynard to McDermott. McDermott with a long one. He decided to go long in preference to kicking it to McFarlane, who's in the centre of the ground. But Russell Ebert marks it, and where McFarlane left, he's gone back there. Kinnear taps it on. Giles can't take possession, but he kept his body on the line of the ball. Well done, Tony Giles. Danny Hughes, who's a prolific... Pro what's the word? I'm pro prolific? Prodigious. Prodigious is the word I'm looking for. If Matunga get into the right place at the right time, kicks it behind. So Port Adelaide score their second behind. They're two points. Glenelga a goal. Wasn't sure if he meant that he kicked it a long way or he got a lot of them. <laughs> Farquhar to the centre square. Carey almost. Clifford. And a ball up. The Bay's a goal. Port two points. And the bounce down is on centre wing. For Port Adelaide, we've got Russell Johnston. Peter Carey on the same side. In front of him. Gets the ball straight to McGuinness. He leaves it behind. Clifford can't get it. And when he does, he's disposed of. Kinnear spoiled away by McFarlane from Curtis. Bad bounce from McDermott. Everyone's getting one. But McKinnis bringing up the rear. Twists out of the pound. Beautiful handball to Duthie. Duthie into the pocket. Tony Hall can't make it. 
and it's out of bounds. Forward pocket for Glenelg. In the dead pocket, if there's such a thing. He's certainly alive at the moment as the players compete for this throw in. Johnston and Kernahan. Beautiful knock by Kernahan, the handball forward. Couldn't pick who that was, Bruce. 12 3 it was, and handballed over the top. The little player feeling his shoulder just. Kidney hit. Robert, he's in a bit of trouble. I don't know whether he's hurt his shoulder or he's just got a hit on the Elbow. funny bone. Might be a funny bone job, I think. Johnston and Kernahan. Now Belton. Carries underneath it. Anderson. Doothy stayed down. High round his body. Hoping for Fedke. Ebert thumps it away. Marshall got a good bounce. Then comes wide and kicks it long to Kidney. Eckerman's with him. So we've got a young man in his second game, 16 years of age, playing on a man who's played 150. What a wonderful player Ivan Eckerman's been too. That was a good kick by Marshall, trying to get it over the half forward line rather than playing that little short kick up. Oh, lovely knock by Kernahan. 12th tree gets it back to him and he's kicked another goal. No, he hasn't. He's hit the post. I thought she'd have come back with the leg then. Very good bit of play. 1 1 to Stephen Kernahan. 1 1 to Glenelg. Two points to Port Adelaide. Ben Harris. Johnston's going to give him a lead. Kicked it to position. Johnston almost. Giles missed it. Kinnear. Hands and knees. He's got a free kick to Ebert. Not a good kick. Marshall half volleys it. Still Marshall gets around Ebert. Now, can he kick the goal? No out of bounds on the foot. Would have been sensational if he go from that play. But didn't quite balance up. It was the drop pump, was the kick, Bruce. Just the normal leg. Evasion was superb. Eckerman to half back. Johnston in the front. Russell Johnston coming back to his very best form. Centre wing. Farland spoils away to 12 3. Good player, 12 3 2. McGuinness, McDermott. McDermott to the goal square. He changed his mind, then he's kicked it out of bounds on the full. And McDermott went for the handball halfway through that kick. Was I think if he'd have set his mind, once he decided to go for the goal, to line his body up, there was no doubt he would have got the distance. Tony Hall from the back. Fedke, going to get a free kick. So Fedke from half forward. He started at centre half forward, as Robert said. He was named to start in the pocket. Full forward with Kernahan in the pocket, but Kernahan has been really the full forward all year. Kerry and Kernahan changing from there. He's a long kick, Carl Fedke, too, Bruce. Shoelace just undone there. Boot lace, I should call it. Well, they like shoes these days, aren't they? Like right, the old days, we used to have them up our shins. The old slip ons these days. Fedke's kicked it well. Kernahan's got three against him. She almost hurled that. Harris through his legs. Johnston, still a chance here. It's going to be a ball up. Somebody <laughs> wanting umpire Kinnear to show some courage. I think he is the fact that he's out there. <laughs> Kernahan, still Kernahan with Eckerman on to him. Going through Russell. Huppets to Ebert. Ebert at half back. A very good kick by Huppets. Maynard from behind, can't take possession. It's out of bounds. Centre wing. Ray Huppert's little kick around the body then to Russell Ebert. Very well done. Johnson coming in late. Carey holds ground. Free kick to Kinnear as he put himself on top of the ball. Blocked in front of his opponent. About 40 metres the ball's covered. Let it can't take the mark, but Clifford can certainly read it well. And looking very fit too. And holding on decision. Against Paul Belton, the free kick to Scott Salisbury. In fact, he took a very good mark as well, even under severe restriction. So Scott Sco Salisbury from the back pocket to centre wing. Carey from behind, can't take the mark, tries to recover, but Johnston does it better. Puppets, Evans in front, this is when he's dangerous. Won't beat him once he gets the big paws on it. Well done, Tim Evans. Good kick by Ray Huppets. Tim Evans from 35 metres. Important goal, this one for Port Adelaide. They yeah, two points. Not good. Didn't get the ball down square, and Tim Evans is off 
line and through for the third point to Port Adelaide. It's his first score for the match. So they're three points. Glenelg 1-1. One, one. They're holding Glenelg at the moment, Bruce. They've done it for 10 minutes. Farquhar. They had a magnificent final term against the Bulldogs a fortnight ago. He's kicked that ball almost to the centre. Carey couldn't quite hold it. Curtis, Hewitt, Marshall. It's gone long again. That's a great kick. McGuinness and Eckerman. 12-3. Evert's with him. It's going to be a ball in. It's Marshall's kicked the ball long twice now. He's covered two lines, which is important. Except the time he went for goal, Bruce, he used to try to use his screw punt for some unknown reason. McGuinness, a great take. Sewers on the ground. Tony Hall might have gone off. He was in the arms of the trainer. Had to go. Threw it up in the air. Kidney, who kicked the goal with his first kick in league football at Elizabeth Sunday week ago. Got the chance to put this ball right into the goal square. I haven't seen him kick a long ball yet, Robert, so I don't know how far he can kick. Ball coming back with the wind. Turn the hands there again. What a great judge of a mark he is. He's going to be on a fairly acute angle, though. He marked the ball. Almost in the goal square it was. It was, it was further in the goal square than where the player's standing to mark, I would have thought. That's Ben Harris. He plays on and kicks a goal. So Stephen Kernahan now. Two goals, one he's kicked. And so have Glenelg. Port Adelaide at three points. Well, it was a very long kick from Young Kidney. He got the free kick in the pocket. He timed it very well. And Kernahan's mark was a beauty. And then brought right around on an angle. Kernahan didn't panic. He went right back and then came around to just improve the angle slightly and kick straight. So he's had a good start in Glenelg at 2-1. So Peter Carey and Russell Johnston. Bounce favouring Johnston. He takes it in his hands. But then the handball, not good. Belton gets it forward. Carey recovering back into defence. Well done, Carey. Kick forward by Wayne Stringer. Fedke puts a hand on it. Clifford. Kidney. McFarlane, Marshall, it's in the pocket, it's run out of bounds. So David Marshall couldn't quite break free then. If he could have, he certainly would have had a go at the goal. Johnston's got back quickly. Carey will stay across the centre wing and Kernahan will do the ruck work. 12-3 tried to snare it. Harvey, good tackle by Simon, still with Harvey. For Plesia, Kernahan. It's going to be a ball up. Full forward, Bays attacking. Port have done reasonably well, but a couple of goals here for Glenelg would give them the break they need. Kernahan took off very early against Johnston. For Plesia looks for a free kick. Hewitt, Johnston, Belton, smothered by McDermott. For Plesia had a very difficult ball. Simons a snap. It's a behind. 2-2, two, two. no longer Stephen Kernahan, the only scorer for the Bays, port three points. Tony Simons very deep into that forward line. He loves to get near the goals. He's playing on the half forward flank. Mark Hewitt up on the wing. Mark Hewitt, of course, started as a half forward flanker for the West Torrance Club when he first came into league football. Was a very, very good player in that position. And since he's come back into the Galilg side this year, Bruce, in the defensive action, they've improved immensely. I don't know whether it was through him coming back or the team just getting their act together. But he's a very good player. He was in that play then up in the forward line. Ben Harris. Free kick. Russell Johnston will take it. What a wonderful competitor he is for Port Adelaide. Gets underneath the ball. His movement's good. Enables him to make the yards necessary to compete for the ball. Always gives him something to kick out. Danny Hughes. Good to see Danny Hughes taking a mark. We're so used to seeing him playing defence and just spoiling the ball away. He may pick up some of that confidence by playing at centre half forward. Valetic knocks it away. Robertson. Clifford. Evans is under it. He's got it. Well done. Tim Evans. 40 metres again. Breeze across him from left to right. Comes in a couple of metres. Yeah. Now 
chance for the win. Which it's too good. He seems to be squatting a little bit on his left leg. Bruce, he's not upright and smooth in his movement. So Tim Evans has kicked two behinds now. Port Adelaide a four. Behinds, a little 2-2-14. Two, two, a far close has kicked in very well with a breeze behind him. McDermott, the free kick will go to Kernahan. He's got to come back. So equal scoring shots at the moment. After over 15 minutes, Port has done well into the breeze. Now finally with Kernahan. Fetke gives him a lead. Marshall. Oh, that was a good mark. The ball never quite got to Fetke. Carey. Harris at the back. Kinnear. Johnston's in trouble. Hewitt fell over. 12 3 won't. Still 12 3. Didn't quite get it right, Sewer. Behind. 12 3 put the leg break on that left footer. And it's 2 3 to, to 4 points. And ben Harris to bring the ball back into play. Leon 12 3, a good kick normally. Unusual for him to miss that. Harris high to the grandstand side. Johnson decides to spoil on this occasion. Giles tapping it out of bounds. Half back flank for Port Adelaide. Half forward for Glenelg. Stephen Kernahan's in the ruck. Peter Carey's back at full forward for a bit of a breather after about 15 minutes. Kernahan <coughs> pushing a player like, taken by Hewitt. And just tapped out of bounds again by Andy Porplesia. Fedke comes in to give Kernahan a hand as Kernahan's now going back to the centre wing. Fedke and Johnston, body against body. Porplesia with a virtually a nothing kick in the end. Johnston's long arms kept the ball in play. And again a ball up. So Johnston doing a very good job in this first quarter. As Robert said, he's at the fall of the ball so many times. Fedke took off early. Kidney tried to get through Ebert. 12-3 got a high one against Clifford. Let's see if he can time this one a little better than the last kick. He's got Carey wanting it in the goal square. Harris is with him. But there's no Stephen Kernahan to take the big grab here now. Oh, he's kicked that better. Just missed. Very good kick by 12 tree. So that's two points to Leon 12 tree. And the Bays 2 4, Port Adelaide 4 points. Yes, Leon Twelftree is a much underrated player, in my opinion, Bruce. Harris to Ebert. Perhaps a bit of a chance, but the kick was good. Ebert going out wide to Eckerman. It's not a good one. It really floated towards him. Eckerman goes underneath Peter Carey. He's got plenty to go underneath off. Big fellow Peter Carey. Spoiled away by Stringer. Anderson takes it and receives a free kick for a trip. So Tim Anderson. So Dexter Kennedy comes onto the ground. Chris McDermott. Chris Duthie. Fumble take. Over half forward. Sewer dropping back. He's right underneath the ball. Puts a fist into it. Simons. He can't get it. There's a ball player. We'll have to get a free kick through in the back. And it looks like Philip Kidney. Robin Kidney. Philip Kidney, how could I do that, Bruce? Robin Kidney. Well, he hasn't been around for a long time, Robert. No, I could be in trouble. Robin Kidney, 50 metres. Lovely distance, Bruce. And accuracy. They go nil, 3 4. Port Adelaide, 4 points. Well, the young 16 year old is a very good kick. 10 minutes ago, he kicked the ball from the pocket that Kernahan marked. And then he got in after the ball. Harvey getting into his back. Getting a free kick in the true centre half forward position here at the Glenelg over when he kicked very straight and long and he scored a goal, so the base three in front. Kernahan against Kennedy. Kernahan gets it down to Marshall. Curtis. McFarlane going for the ball. That's confidence, John McFarlane. Intercepted by Kinnear. Gets up with the ball and forced out Clifford, puts a hand on it. Clifford. Still Clifford. To half forward, Belton underneath it, Holst from behind, and Marks. 
Free kick against Scott Salisbury. For Paul Belton. For holding on. And Tim Evans has missed twice. Can the little rover Belton do the job? Kicks holding. Just offline. He's kicked it to the wrong side. So it really had no chance on the way unless it did some miraculous comeback. So it's a point to Paul Belton, his first score. Five points to Port Adelaide, 3-4 to Glenelg. Marshall in the front spot. Hewitt is having a very good first term. He's got Sewer. Sewer will go around Harvey and he'll have a shot on the run. Drop punt, missed it. Carey, not quite out on the fall. Better for the doubt there, Bruce. Umpire judging that Carey touched it. So it was worth the effort and dive. That's for sure. Must have put a hand on the ball. He's kept it in that forward pocket for the base. Bad kick by Ralph Sury. He should have got that on line. His confident best kick was good enough. Kidney. Well done, Kidney. It's a go, isn't it? Two goals for the little fellow. Robin Kidney. And that's what the base wanted, Robert. They've pinched that break. They're four, four to five points. Peter Carey put the ball down to Kidney. He just sat in front of him and he just ran it down his arm to Kidney. But Kidney found himself encompassed by players. Peter Carey was ecstatic with the performance of Kidney with his ability to evade then and get the ball through the goal. It was very well done. So Glenelg with a chance now. A very good chance. Big Dexter started on the interchange bench. Kernahan with a tap. Duthie tried to crash his way through. Russell with a hip and shoulder against McGuinness. Now Simons, Eva getting back, and he's got it. That's a good mark. Just noticed then that Stephen Clifford made no effort to go towards that player then when he kicked it from the centre of the ground. Just ran away to half forward, and it was an opposition player. Paul Belt. Good kick too. Off hands. Folletti can't take it. Kennedy can. Handball's intercepted well by McDermott. McDermott through the centre. And accurately to the goal square, Carey from behind. He's in position. Kidney coming in. Fedke's up there, has grabbed by a leg. And he'll take a free kick. There's a beautiful movement then. The interception on the half-back line is very well done. So Donnell through Carl Fedke. Playing at centre-half forward. He's first, the Mills fifth, they're five goals for Port Adelaide, five points. That handball of Kennedy's being intercepted by McDermott, and it was a very, very long kick. Carey against Harris, one out. And the ball going to Fedke. Fedke being leg, getting the free kick, and they're kicking accurately. So the Tigers have pinched a break, Robert. Port did very well for 15 minutes. But the effort told on them, and Glenelg have kicked three goals in a hurry, and they're going to go in at quarter time with a five or six goal lead, maybe more. Well, Russell Johnston is back on the ground, Dexter Kennedy having gone off. A change for approximately ten minutes or so. Kernahan just straight down to his feet. Belton, Wayne Stringer to half forward. Giles setting himself. Giles marks. Giles, a very fine halfback flanker. Kicks to centre wing. Stringer spoiling from behind. Poor Plesia to Johnston. Johnston to Folletti. He doesn't get a good bounce. Curtis can't either. Salisbury in strongly. Kicks it while he's lying on the ground. Poor Plesia jumping through the air. Anderson, he can't take it. Everybody's after it. Nobody gets it. Between half forward and centre wing for Port Adelaide. Hughes doing the ruck work as Johnson goes back to half bat. Kernahan. Free kick against Kernahan. Even though he got a very high one late. It's going to Hughes. That was to get him in Hughes' back. Well, that was all about he can get him right in the face then, Bruce. Hughes to fall forward. Evans, he's uh, that's pretty ordinary by uh, Salisbury, I thought. He just ran across in front of Evans, but the free kick goes to Farquhar. And it's a stretcher case for Kernahan, unfortunately. I can't believe what I saw there. I hope it was an accident. So Stephen Kernahan, who had a great start to this game. In fact, the game's going to be held up, I think. 
Yes, it will be. Stephen Kernahan being placed on the stretcher after that bounce down in between centre wing and half forward. The free kick in that incident going to Danny Hughes. The boundary up, the umpire's come out and reported. The boundary umpire has got the courage. He saw what happened. He was a judge that Danny Hughes did not go for the ball, obviously. So Stephen Kernahan leaves the arena. So that means Peter Carey will have to go back onto the ball now. And we're going to have to make a couple of positional changes. And Scott Salisbury from the back pocket to the centre of the ground. Clifford High. Bounced out. Right in the centre of the centre square. To Carey and Johnston. Johnston from the back. Paul Pleasure to Harvitz. Philetic. Paid the mark. He's much taller than Maynard. He's not playing in a key position at the moment. He's on a half-board flank. He's timed that ball very well, Milan Philetic. Given Evans every chance. Farquhar did well. Robertson. Salisbury still got him. And it's going to be a ball up. So it's about 20 metres around from the Port Adelaide goal square. Delilga 5-4, Porter 5 points, and it's 27 minutes into the quarter. Peter Carey on the ball against Danny Hughes. Ball just out of bounds. Nothing constructive from that particular bounce down. Peter Carey and Hughes again. Hughes doing the ruck work in the forward line for Port Adelaide. Carey bulks in front of him. Hughes runs straight into McFarlane as he gets rid of it then. Huppets coming through strongly. He's tackled. Well done, Ray Huppets. And in strongly. A bit unfortunate not to get a free, perhaps. And Carey again. Carey and Hughes. Tapped on by Hewitt. Around the body by McGuinness. Sewer. McGinnis looked back then, Bruce. I thought something had gone when he kicked the ball. He just looked around behind him for some unknown reason. Johnston and Carey. A lot of feeling here at Glenelg at the moment. Stephen Hewitt. Kernahan hasn't got much. No. 12 tree. He's got Marshall. One bounce. Let's see if he can kick the goal. Got, got, an, cunt. got an open goal square too, Bruce. Missed it again. So one out on the fall and... One point to Marshall, 5-5 five, five to 5 points. Ben Harris from full back. Port Adelaide still in there with a big chance. They've held well this quarter. Five goals and not a big advantage with this breeze. Good mark taken on the half-back line then by Dwayne Russell. Started off his career in the Port Adelaide reserves as a full forward. Kickers to centre wing. Springer interferes, he's up far too early. Then grabs Philetic afterwards and receives a 15 metre penalty. Philetic towards Evans. Farquhar bolts, Evans juggling, Farquhar juggling. Coming across the front of the pack, John McFarlane receives a free kick for in the back. Hughes and Salisbury. McFarlane was lucky there, he just took a dive. He got the free kick though. So McFarlane with a long one. He wants Carey. McDermott. Holst on a lead. Harris with him. Simons and Holst get in one another's row. Holst back to McDermott. He's got to get a right bounce. He does. Then round his body. Ebert should get it. Touched it just in time. Oh, the captain coach was there at the right time then. So it's a behind. Five goals, six to five points. Well, that was well done by Ebert. He was, I thought he was gone, Bruce. He found the yard then. Ben Harris kicks it into the grandstand half forward flank. Carey spoils. Sydney can't take possession. 12th tree blocks Paul Plesha. Or Marshall, magnificent half volley. 
Needed to get the ball to Holst on the full if he could, but it's running right across the ground. Tony Simons evades Russell. Russell hangs on to him after he's handballed in front, and so he'll receive a free kick. So Glamill need another goal, and he'll just give them a bit more advantage. And they've got the ball with the right man at 30 minutes. He decided not to pass, and he may in fact know, Bruce, just how much time on has gone. That's time, he played on around the mark. And so there will be no score from that kick because Tony Simons didn't run directly over the mark. And at quarter time, Benilga 5-6-36, Port Adelaide 5 points. The Bays leading a quarter time, 5-6 to 5 points. With Stephen Kernahan going off the ground on a stretcher in the first term. Danny Hughes being reported. Clifford taps it on. Curtis. Now Salisbury. Left foot. Holst has got to get it. And he has. David Holst on centre wing. Grandstand side to half forward. High in the air, Dwayne Russell. Can't take it. He's tackled too high by Leon Crosstree. And he'll get a free kick. Dwayne Russell. Crowd not happy. They would have liked it to have been holding the ball. Russell to the centre. Carey underneath the ball. Flies, misses it. Curtis. Built. Tackled immediately. Anderson can't get it. Carey recovers. McGuinness. Marshall didn't get the best of bounces. Anderson tries to run him down. Russell's underneath it. And he takes a good mark and let Simons know that he fell. It's a long kick. Carey and Philetic. Salisbury. Duthy. Marshall had a good first turn, didn't kick too straight. Well done, Paul Pleasure. Evans and Farquhar. Oh, Farquhar got a bad bounce. Evans to Hubbards. Didn't handle too well. Well done by Walsh. Touched it. It was going to be a goal. And so it's five, six to six points. Yes, that was certainly made a, a certain goal into a rush behind. Very well done by Gavin Walsh. He's come onto the ground. Tony Hall, of course, is off. It'll be Michael Farquhar who ran way past that ball in to kick in. Very high in the air. Johnston and Carey jostling for position. Belton to Hughes. Paul Pleasure. To the full. Evans sets himself. Farquhar from behind. Marshall who's had a wonderful first quarter. McFarlane, Robert. Uh, McFarlane, I'm sorry. Handballs off to Maynard. Through the fumbles. Evans and McFarlane behind play. They're getting stuck into one another. Philetic, high tackle. This game's been rough and ready. Two clubs, of course, have been involved in some forgettable occasions, I think, in the last couple of years. Philetic. Huppets. Hughes just threw it. Built. Huppets drops it. Now Wayne Stringer. McGuinness. He wants Simons. Not quite. It's going to be a ball there. There's the ball floating to Simons then. Didn't quite get the timing in his kick, Tony McGuinness. But Lanell getting it out of defence very well then. Carey coming across to compete with Russell Johnston. Puts his big bulk in and lays it back towards McGuinness, but Anderson takes possession. Runs straight past Stringer and Salisbury. Hughes comes in. And the free kick will be paid. Against Danny Hughes to Scott Salisbury for in the back. So Scott Salisbury, just forward of the back pocket, to centre wing. Carey and Johnston. Johnston's played a wonderful game. Ebert, forced to kick in a hurry, he ran out of room. Maynard takes off early. Hangs there and takes them up. Then McGuinness, now he's running onto his wrong side, but he's a very long kick with either leg. Hewitt. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm not sure whether umpire Kinnear, in fact, reported Kim Kinnear then. We'll find out after the game, but he certainly had a long talk to him and looked at his number. Free kick going to Port Adelaide and will go to Harvey. Ralph Sewer flew 100 mile up in the air. I've seen then Bruce... 
free kick against him. He kicks it. The ball's kicked back to Carey. Carey gives it off quickly. And Delilga into attack through Chris McDermott. His, his kick is good towards full forward. Well controlled. But Eckerman's there. 150th game. Strong and resolute as ever. Forces the ball out of bounds. And it's in the forward pocket for Glenelg. They're kicking into the breeze. They're holding a five-goal lead. Johnston's there with Fedke. McGuinness over the back. And Carey back on the centre wing. Kernahan somewhere under the grandstand, having been taken off in the first quarter. On a stretcher. So again, Johnston and Fedke. As the crowd quietens down for the moment. Oh, Johnston did it well to Belton. Marshall's got it. He's won the centre. Clifford did do a couple of good things early, but Marshall's had more kicks. He's timed that beautifully to fall forward. Johnston got back. Fedke Holst, left foot by Holst. He's missed it. Five, seven to six points. Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide panicking a little bit in defence. They're just panicking a bit in defence. They're both spoiling each other. And Stephen Kernahan has got a message that he's OK. So that'll be a great deal of pleasure to the, the Lurg fans. He may be able to come back on with a bit of luck. Russell from Anderson. It's a very long ball, but out of bounds on the fall. So it'll be Salisbury to bring it back in. 37 to 6. Port kicking with a very strong breeze, though. And just a couple of straight ones will make this game much, much tighter. Scott Salisbury. A bit of a two-handed drop. Kicking along the line. Well judged, Russell Johnston. Too much balance for Peter Carey, then. To set a half forward. Hughes in front. Couldn't quite complete the mark. Positioned himself very well. Bounced down. So the game's been very tight, very competitive. Both sides looking for a win. For different reasons. Port looking to stay in the five. Glenelg dying to get in there. Philetic's left footer. Oh, Evans has got a good bounce. Then got a bad one. McFarlane and Evans weren't too happy with one another a moment ago. Oh, short kick there by Farquhar. And Kinnear's taken the mark. Kinnear and Hewitt. Hewitt on top in the first quarter. It's always been a long kick, Kinnear. Didn't time that too well, and he also hooked it. So Port go to seven points. Kim Kinnear's first score. They still haven't got their first goal, and the Bays are five set. Yes, if Goodell can just keep Port Adelaide kicking him directly or offline, they'll certainly be with a chance. Michael Farquhar, the centre half back. Off hands from Duthie, kick forward by Maynard. Sewer under the ball, taps it out wide towards Carey. His handball strong to Simons, and Simons will take a free kick. Wayne Russell. Running on, Peter Carey, feeling the might of that young player. And swap the ball. Sewer. Dummies the handball, then plays on. He needs to get the kick away, and he has. It's right into the square. Boyle spoiled forward. Johnston's back in there. Fedke can't get his hands on it. In fact, nobody can, and the umpire will bounce it. Glenelg doing well. 37 to 7. So Johnston again with Fedke. Hulse tries to get through, so does 12 tree. Harris put a high tackle in. Holster's got a chance here. He's going to get a free kick right in front of goal against Clifford. He's going to play on and kick it. He has. So the Bays go to six, seven to seven points, and they've got the first goal of the second turn. Well, Stephen Clifford hasn't been too prepared to go for too many tackles. He's let two go that I've noticed during the course of play. And on that occasion, when he got near it, very carelessly, and Holst in front, he ran right behind Holst instead of a little to the side of him. He's given away a free kick, and David Holst, taking full advantage of it, has given Glenelg a firm grip on the game at the 10-minute mark. Russell Johnson, who's had a great game, but Port aren't capitalising on his efforts. Again gets it to Huffitz. Huffitz ducks quickly, and he gets a free kick. He felt Marshall coming, and he went underneath him, hoping that he'd get the kick, and he did. 
then goes towards centre half forward. A floater, Clifford in the centre, Stringer. Anderson caught by Kidney. Stringer on the up to McFarlane. McFarlane goes wide. Sewer will get it. McFarlane's playing very well this afternoon. Sewer across the ground to Marshall. Well, with a bit of confidence now. Marshall's got to get it in long, I think. And he has done that. It's, it's right on line. Fedke's in front. Harris with one hand, though, just lays it off. Through for a behind. Glenelg well, 6 8. Port Adelaide 7 points. Harris will try and boom it back in. And he has. Carey, one hand. Marshall will leave it for Maynard. McGuinness. Eckerman coming in late. McGuinness in a bit of trouble. He might have hurt his hip there, I think. He's almost at the stage where he can't uh, take the kick, I think. He looks really distressed for the moment, Tony McGuinness. He'd be the right man to take it because he's such a long, long kick, but he's not going to be able to. So the bays are going down like nine pins at the moment. Terry just sneaked up into a space, and behind there, a Galil player, number young kidney, led to where Carey was going to get on his own. And the kick by Chris Duthy is out of bounds on the full. So hopefully McGuinness can recover in a hurry. Russell goes short, and he wants Eckerman. Carey made a big metre then to get up to Eckerman. Eckerman with strength, the umpire slightly blinded then from whether it was out of bounds. It was very close anyway. So there'll be another bounce down. Game still very competitive. Johnston from behind Carey. Carey hitting it back towards 12th tree. He takes it. Dummies the handball to Simons, then quietly controls it across to Tony McGuinness. He just cruised down from centre half forward. Everyone forgot about him for a moment. And this is an important goal, Bruce. These are the ones that can really seal games up. They help to keep the opposition well out of it. And to get these goals, of course, you psychologically put extra pressure on your opponent. McGuinness. Goal. So Tony McGuinness scores his first goal for the match. The Tigers second for the quarter. And they now move well in advance of um, Port Adelaide. They are seven goals, eight, leading Port Adelaide seven points. Well, just two minutes ago, McGuinness was unable to take his kick, but he snuck down into that forward line then and got on his own and read the ball well. He's always been a great kick for goal. Russell Ebert's got a few problems at the moment. He's calling for the runner, and Port Adelaide are in a desperate position. Peter Carey and Russell Johnston. Carey for Glenelg, number five, big strong man. Hits it out the kidney. Kidney's tackled a little high, but he's caught holding the ball. It looked as though it was high. And Stephen Curtis gives it to Ebert. Ebert keen to get on with the game. He no doubt understands how important it is to move the ball. The up at half forward, Ray Huppets takes the kick. The Lil must not relax now, Bruce. I've got a run on, they've got to concentrate on the ball Ebert lifting his side temporarily there, Ray Huffett's kick just floating off line and through from behind so Port Adelaide have got to get a goal to get themselves running and they just can't do it at the moment, they've done it's 13 minutes into the second quarter and Port still haven't scored a goal Farquhar, Kerry with one hand Anderson long handball to Curtis, he's been quiet today Curtis, Clifford Belton, Giles, always set him up. Holst hit him with everything. Quick kick away by Stringer. He's in a bit of trouble, Giles. That play did not go for the ball, David Holst. The only had his mind on was laying Tony Giles out on a direct charge. And also, his feet were off the ground completely when he did it. Hewitt, round his body to 12 tree. Now he's got Sue in the pocket. Sue shall kick a goal. Long handball, Fedke will kick it. And the Bays are 8-8 eight, eight to 8 points, and Giles is flat on his back at centre-half forward. And he's out. That's a, that's a very bad incident. Most unfortunate, a wonderful bit of play by Glenelg, though, and they ran it down the ground after that. Holst recovered, got them started. They went all the way down the ground to kick the goal. But Tony Giles, that incident then, the ball being close by, allows a player to come in. But the, the idea of the play, though, was to lay him right out 
And David Hall certainly did that with every ounce of his energy. And Tony Giles now going to be taken off on a stretcher. So what have we seen so far today? We've seen Stephen Kernahan laid out and taken on, out on a stretcher. We've seen Danny Hughes reported. I don't know if Kim Kinnear was reported. I don't think he was. No, and he now just pushed seen... Mark Hewitt in the back when he'd taken a mark, just deliberately pushed him forward, trying to lob him on his face. And now poor Tony Giles, the All-Australian halfback flanker, carted off on a stretcher after David Holst had laid him out. That's 8-8 eight, eight to 8 points. Once Spite starts coming into a game of football, Bruce, this is what happens. The first incident, of course, was when Stephen Kernahan was laid out. And, of course, the Glenelg players now, just every time an opportunity comes up, they're obviously going to feel a little bit of remorse and they won't stop at anything if it's within the rules. And that was a very firm hip and shoulder bump straight through the centre of Tony Giles. There has been so much ill feeling between the clubs over the last couple of years that it is a pity. This is what happens, though. And I don't think this is really the spirit of the game of Australian football. So no more Tony Giles. 56 to 8. He may come good in a minute, Bruce. It just depends whether he's badly winded as well. Carey and Johnston. And the battle continues. Carey just takes it out of the air, then round his body. 12 tree. Curtis falls over and gets a free kick, then gives it to Ebert. Ebert quickly onto his boot. Carey, Hughes, Hughes taps it on cleverly. Robertson, Wayne Stringer. Got a bit of time. Not a good kick. Kinnear couldn't handle it. Gee, Johnston's playing a game, Robert. Gives it to Kinnear. Kinnear with a high one. Into centre half forward. Clifford from behind. Off his hands towards Folletti. Salisbury with his nose right on the ball. Takes possession. Can't advantage the ball, though. But it's still in the area. Port Adelaide couldn't go into attack. Salisbury had left Huppets up in the forward pocket on his own. It was able to stop the ball, getting back to him. So it was well done. Holster's gone to centre half forward, Robert. So Hughes and Carey, still with Carey, and a ball up. So Holster centre half forward on Ebert. Curtis looks like he's gone to a half-back flank. He was playing on the ball early. Port making a couple of changes. Yes, the Elk have kept Fedke in, in at full forward, Bruce, where Kernahan and Carey were changed. But obviously Carey's going to have to spend most of his time on the, in the ruck now. Ball flies clear to Hewitt. Hewitt towards Ebert. Sewer coming in from behind. Ebert strong in front. Holst to Marshall. Harvey trying to square up with Holst. Fedke high. Can't complete the mark. Sewer comes in strongly. And there'll be a free kick. Kicking in danger. Tried to kick the ball out of Ben Harris's hands. Anyhow, yeah, that's what I thought he did. So Eckerman with Harvey and Holst having a chat to one another behind play. Stringer thumps it away from Hughes and it's going to be a ball in. 56 to 8. Hughes and Carey again. Carey with a tap. Anderson snared it beautifully. Then to Clifford. Quick left footer. Walsh has got to take a chance. Didn't get the bounce. Robertson went without it. Now Walsh is going to have to just give it to Hewitt. Hewitt's got it. Now he's got Maynard running for him. And also Marshall and Holst. He wants Marshall. Marshall's taken the mark half back. Very strong mark too. Russell Ebert coming across quickly. Couldn't spoil him. He held that mark very firmly. Marshall backward of the centre line. Kicks about the distance of the square. Ralph Sewer. Spectacular mark. Plays on. Controls the ball forward. Obviously wants to play. Leon 12-3 goes to play on. He's tackled. Backed up by McDermott. Sewer has an airy. He goes down. Then there's a free kick for in the back to John Harvey at centre half back. Harvey quickly to Belton. Duthie tries to run him down. Now Anderson. Kidney tried to run him down. It was good play by Kidney because he made Anderson kick with his wrong foot. So he's hit his Williams, so that was Stringer, but I don't think that was on purpose. And now Hughes and Philetic want to get involved. McFarlane, this is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not sure that he didn't hit his head when he hit the ground. No, what there. happened? Stringer came in and uh, he hit Stringer's elbow, but it certainly wasn't on purpose. And have a look at this. Clifford and Salisbury. 
Uh, you can see this down. Oh, that's a joke, Robert. Oh, you can see this any other way. joke. This is what footy's all about. I want to go home. <laughs> this is no fun at all. No. Stretch has come out again. I'm sure that was accidental. Yes, when he hit the ground, though, Bruce, I think what happened was it was he banged his head. He vibrated. We'll be able to see it later on, I'm sure, in a replay. But I think when he hit the ground, he vibrated. He may have just hit his head on the ground. I can't see why any idiot 100 metres away can run in and want to fight after something they could not possibly have seen. It makes you want to discuss the possibility if a third player comes in in any way when an incident occurs between two and takes part in the incident, whether he, in fact, should not be penalised very severely by the umpire. So there's a free kick it's going to be, of course, to Ray Huffers and a 15-metre penalty. Ray will take the kick for Port Adelaide. 8-8 eight, eight to 8 points, Port still hasn't kicked a goal and Anthony Williams is going to leave the ground on a stretcher. Have you ever seen a game like this before? No. You played in 300. <laughs> no, I've played in a few where it's been a bit dangerous, but I can't... Yes, the whole event. It's just not good. But the game's got to go on and someone out there's got to keep playing the ball. If I were Glenelg, there's one thing I wouldn't be in. And that's playing the man right now. If it was eight goals in front, I'd be having every player calm as you like at the footy to try and consolidate that lead because, after all, they want the points badly and they've got Port Adelaide right where they want them at the moment. And Ray Huppets with the opportunity to score Port Adelaide's first goal. He floats it in for a goal. So that free kick and the 15-metre penalty allows Port Adelaide to get onto the board at the 21-minute mark of the second quarter. They're 1-8, trailing Glenelg 8-8. That free kick coming when Anthony Williams was uh, knocked out, but I'm well. I don't think it was intentional by any stretch of the imagination. The stringer going for the ball because we don't have the facility to see it on replay during the game. We we'll see it tonight. So it's Harris in the ruck with Fedke. Now McDermott, Carey, and Kennedy's back there. Well, he threw that away with an open hand. It left his hand in an open hand. Curtis. Russell. To set a wing. McFarlane under it. Spoiled away, though, by Belton. And out of bounds. Benelga 8-8. Port 1-8. 22 minutes in the second quarter. Harrison Fedke. Harris having a run on the ball. Dexter at full back. Duthie caught by Hubbard. And again, a ball in. This poor reflex by Duthy Bruce. He had a, his teammate Tony McGinnis just in front of him. A little handball over would have done the trick. So Carl Fedke, the run on the ball. Johnston in front, leaning back on him, just lays it back. McGinnis gets there first, though. Playing with the ball. Couldn't take it on the, when he came back out of that turn. And the kick goes to Peter Maynard. Just towards the centre line. Just holding it up for the moment. McGuinness very short. Wants 12 tree or Simons. Looks like Curtis in the centre. Long handball to Huppets. Port trying to get something going now. Huppets with a long one. Maynard. Oh, he judged it well. Had Philetic coming in from one side. Hughes from the other. Now he's not too sure what to do. Very short to McDermott in the centre. McDermott's got holes wide. With the performer going on now too, Bruce. Making everything look about twice as bad as it is. A floater, Sewer with a thump away, only as far as Huppets. Huppets with a nice leg trap. Harvey drops the ball. Anderson picks it up and gives it to Curtis. The free kick's going to go back, though, to John Harvey. I was watching the ball. I didn't really see what that was for. It doesn't matter anyway. So John Harvey. Long kick over half-forward line. Players fly high, three Glenelg players. Philetti gives it to Clifford. Clifford misses. So that's an indication of Port Adelaide's lack of confidence at the moment, and Stephen Clifford should be ashamed of himself. He could have run up to the goal line then and just kicked it along the ground. Decided to kick it from 15 to 20 metres out, and then sprayed it sideways. Farquhar to himself. Evans tries to run him down. Drop punt. Harris and Fedke. Harris almost. He's going to be paid. That's the mark that Fedke took in the first quarter, if you remember correctly, when he was not under any pressure and he wasn't allowed it. So Harris from half forward. Evans with a fly. Thumped away by Farquhar. Clifford snares it. 
and tries to get rid of it. And it's going to be a ball up. Of course, what's going to happen, Robert, if Port can't get another goal, the Bays are going to be seven in front with the wind at their back in the third quarter. They only have to kick three or four, and it'll be all over. It's made to order for them at the moment. They're just going to keep their cool. Fed keep working hard on the ball. Peter Carey having a bit of a breather for this last five minutes before three-quarter time. Half-time, Robert. Uh, Half-time. Gee, I have got this game going fast, Bruce. I've switched it off already. Fedke and Johnston. Fedke with his left hand to Huppets. He has an airy, built. Marshall. I thought he was going to get it, but Anderson was too good. Hewitt. So Hewitt's going to get the free kick. Salisbury's run into Kinnear. I don't think Kinnear's feeling all of that too good. McFarlane. I think it was two free kicks at once almost then. Bruce, one to Port Adelaide, one to Glenelg. Glenelg got the free. Marshall. Oh, Marshall. McFarlane to half forward. Harris takes the mark, plays on to Harvey. Kidney tried to run him down. Now Curtis. Still Curtis, he's dodging shadows. Now Harvey. No High run kick. On. No run on for Port Bruce. They're looking for some. Ebert almost. Glenelg converge on him though. Now Walsh after McDermott gave it to him. High one. Carey. Oh, sure, almost. Gee, almost. Oh, what a he great hung there forever. Marshall. Marshall spins out and then kicks and misses. So Marshall today has kicked two points and he's kicked one out of bounds on the full. The Bays are 8-9 nine to 1-9. One, nine. We're into time on, but it's going to be a fairly long quarter. Not because there's been a lot of goals, but because we've had a lot of people go off the field on stretches. Gee, I'd love to see a replay of that, Sue. I reckon he took that, Bruce. I know he lost it. He was up so high and spinning in the air. So ball kicked in. Free kick to Port Adelaide's Russell Johnston. Pushed in the back. Away he goes, the big fellow. Kicks 60 metres to half forward. The second very good mark this quarter to Peter Maynard. Comes to the grandstand side to McFarlane, who's worked and played a magnificent first half. His hand was long and strong to fed towards Fedke. Maynard puts a hand in there. Now they're in trouble. Beautiful take by Belton. Into the forward area. Farquhar can't decide. Hughes has got it. Well, Farquhar saved his bacon. He left Evan standing in the goal square on his own. Taps it out of bounds. So they live again, Glenelg. Jim Maynard made a bad error of it. Nearly cost him a goal. They're fiddling with the ball. He didn't want to take it, did he, Bruce? He was only half going. Hughes gets rid of Fedke, then tries to get rid of the ball. And then McDermott. Maynard underneath it. He's going to get a free kick against Valetic. He did that well, didn't he, Bruce? He let the ball go. He made no... He knew he was gone. He was set up completely. Now Walsh, or oh, this is danger. Johnston against Walsh. Walsh has done a couple of good things. Got rid of Robertson. And then Watts fed Kidney's got him. Well played, Walsh. Now to Maynard. Maynard to Kidney. Kidney wants to handball. Anderson, two young men together. Poplicia, Marshall. Curtis comes in. Built. Now Marshall. No one to give it to. Now it'll be Salisbury. And he's got a bit of time. Salisbury to half forward. Dropping back into half-back is the big fellow, Ben Harris. Harris short to Huppets. Huppets looking to play on. Eckerman. Trying to get themselves running, Port Adelaide. This is the, the sign that they might be getting it. Philetic goes with one hand, but McFarlane's there again. Thinks he should have got a free for being held on to. Maynard, Marshall picks it up. Walsh can't take it. Finally, it's got out to Clifford. And this time Clifford lets one go. But no, he can't do it again. That's his second point for this quarter. So they're 110 now, Port Adelaide, to 8-9 Glenelg. Far quite to bring it back in. So since quarter time, the Bays have kicked three goals, three, and Port have managed one five. It was a lovely kick by Farquhar into the breeze. Holds up a bit. Marshall and McDermott with a run of it. Marshall got rid of for Fleischer. McDermott hung on to it. Simon stood his ground. And the Bays get a valuable 40 metres in a bit of time. We get to the 28-minute mark and it's going to be a ball in. Russell Ebert coming across quickly with David Hulse. It's going to be Carey and Johnson and Kennedy to contest. Kennedy lays it back, but only as far as Hulse. He's tackled. Harris gets in the road, but can't get the ball. Holt's still in there, then taps it out of bounds. Cunning move. Graham Russell wants an easy kick. Might pay him to get out there and win one. 
So Carey and Kennedy again. Carey with his left hand, spoiled by Ebert forward. Anderson to Giles, to Harris rather. Belton goes to half forward. Tries to draw, runs too far. Peter Maynard has held his ground well then, Bruce. Made him run the extra couple of metres. Short by Maynard. Kidney. Kidney's kicked. Two great goals today. He's got to kick this down the line, Bruce. They've just got to play safe. He's Gee, a good it. kick, isn't he, for a young man? Timed it beautifully. 12 3 One bounce. Two bounces now. He should kick a goal. He has. a nail in the coffin that's really rubbing it in 9 9 to 1 10 you well, told me you could play six months ago you're right well i think that leon 12 3 is a very good player russell ebert was in two minds then he didn't know whether to go to him or stay and he was halfway in between and 12 3 when he got the opportunity kicked a magnificent kick at full pass so fedke runs in against harris and he wins it Anderson goes without a kidney. 16 years of age. 12 tree and Curtis. Pulse with one hand. Carey. Oh, no free kick. Eckerman in towards centre half back. Missed by Belton. Not well, any luck, are they, Bruce? No, the boys, either. Sewer. Duthi. Could have handballed it. But chose to kick, and it's a very good kick against Russell in any case, Robert, for after disposal. He's, look, he's arguing with the umpire, Dwayne Russell. He's about 19 years of age. He spent all day arguing with the umpire and he's very, very upset at the moment. I think it might pay him to keep his cool. 13th kick for David Marshall. And playing well too. And David Marshall, the Glenelg centreman, 50 metres from goal. High to the square, Carey from the back, puts both hands on it, then takes it off the ground. Well done, Kerry. He's held it in the area. It'll be about 32 minutes gone this quarter. And I'd say there would be even a few more to go. Kerry and Kennedy. Kerry just gets rid of Big Dexter and he's going to get a free kick against him. So Kennedy from fullback, quickly on. Belton with a high one. Anderson and Duthie. Free kick to Anderson against Duthie. And now 15 metres. So Anderson goes to centre half forward. Hughes and Stringer. Hughes much taller. Salisbury quickly onto his boot. Robertson made it. He's got Johnston. That's a very good kick. And the siren's gone. And at half time, the Bays lead 9-9-63 to Port 1-10-16. Graham Campbell has never ever seen a half of football since he's been in South Australia like that. The Bays lead by plenty. Start of the second half, Glenelga leading 9-9-63 to Port 1-10-16 after a very, very spiteful at times first half. It's Carey laying the ball forward. Anderson can't take possession. Knocked on by Duthie. Simons is off for Port Adelaide. Port Pleasure coming through from defence. Holst. Sewer, caught with the ball, drops it, holding the ball. Paul Kleischer, Kernahan back on the ground for the Bays. After going off on a stretcher in the first quarter, Belton's kicked the centre wing. Clifford. Now Robertson. McFarlane late. McFarlane had an exceptional first half. Oh, Huppert, that's a good mark. Splendid mark by Ray Huppertz. There's no way you could ever say Ray Huppertz has got any fear, Bruce. He came straight across Tim Evans then, put himself in a position where he could have been absolutely flawed, and Tim managed to just shave him. Andy Porpleach are playing in defence in the back pocket. Harvey's gone up to the centre wing. Russell Evers made a number of changes. Port in a desperate position. They want a goal here. Huppertz has missed. The kicking's really let them down. They kick 111 to 99. And Huppets has kicked one, two. So the Bays with the breeze and with his big, big lead. Ball will be brought in by Michael Farquhar. 
Done a good job at fullback on Tim Evans. Tim had the first two kicks that went up there. Farquhar's managed to hold him. It's a floating kick. Nearly knocked Stephen Clifford over. In fact, it has. It was a very good mark. Cannon into his body. And he held it firm. Exceptional judgment. To the pocket. Coming over the back it was Philip Robertson. I thought he may have marked it, but no. It's been paid to the front man, Scott Salisbury. Salisbury from the back pocket. Had an awkward kicking style, but he kicked that one a long way. Russell was up, couldn't take it. Tony Hall back on the ground as well to Duthie. A Duthie towards Kernahan. Harris in the front spot. Oh, Seward did it well. He'll finish it off. So Ralphie's got his first. That's his first goal in league football for a long, long time, and he loves it. And it's 10 9 to 1 11. Well, Ralph Sewer has been a very, very cool, calm player this afternoon. He's done some very good work across the half forward line for Glenelg. He and Leon Twelftree have been two very good half forwards. His ability to be a little bit calmer today has been what's made Ralph Sewer such a dangerous player. But from the centre wing then, when they went into attack, Glenelg always looking very confident. And I'm afraid, Bruce, that the Magpie is in big trouble. Big super carry. He had to do most of the ruck work in the first half when Stephen Kernahan went off. Russell Johnston played a fine first half. Bounce gives Carey the chance. Ebert missed it. So did Dwayne Russell. So did Stephen Curtis. Holst to McGuinness. It's not a bad kick round his body. It's a behind. So 10-10 to 111. And McGuinness has got 1-1. One, one. It's an amazing score, isn't it? 111 to 10-10. Ten, ten brings back memories of that 1964 grand final when South led 5-6 to 10 points by Port Adelaide at half time. I can't remember that long ago, Bruce. So it'll be Ben Harris from fullback, kicking into a breeze. He's chosen to kick straight into it too because the wind's coming from the northwest. Carey fumbles the mark. He's not gonna, he knows exactly where he is. That's experience. He says, I'm on the Glenelg over on the kick out and I think I'll just put this back over the fullback's head. Well, let's see whether he can do it. Kicked some beautiful goals in his career, Peter Carey. Sends the screw punt away, distance, no worries. It's over his head. It's the goal. Thank you very much, says the skip. 11-10 Glenelg, 1-11 to Port Adelaide. Well, the big super's kicked 406 goals in his career to date. I don't think many of them would have given him much more pleasure than that one. Harris is kicking, he juggled the mark, and Robert picked it perfectly, and the screw punt went on forever. So Peter Carey, from a very fine goal, in for the knock, almost over the shoulder, Clifford competing in the front position, gets the free kick, Mark Hewitt just a little high. On the centre, Clifford to half forward, Hughes setting himself under the ball, goes with one hand, just brings it down the front, McFarlane's there again, McGuinness takes the mark about 10 or 15 metres, plays onto the outer side, gives Duthie an opportunity to run, it's gone too far, he's going to have to knock it on, he's done just that. Tony Hall with a long one, Kernahan sets himself, Harris did very well, so did Curtis, Poplicia, now Sewer who's played very, very well today, still with Sewer, still with Sewer, has he kicked the goal? He has! Oh, what a goal! Well done, Ralphie. Do you think he loves it, Robert? The crowd have gone wild. The grandstand is red and, red and black, I was going to say. That was last week. Black and gold flags everywhere. And Ralph Sewer just running the ball between legs. Post Glenelg's 12th goal. They're 12-10 to 1-11. And Ralph Sewer and his return to footy. And the Bays with their tail right up now. They're starting to kick them from anywhere. And that will certainly not please Port Adelaide. So the two old champs, Peter Carey and Ralphie Sewer, kicked three goals within six minutes. And the cry from the Glenelg stand is percentage, percentage, percentage. Harvey tries to go through. Ebert gets a kick. It goes wide. Duthie. Wants Carey. Dwayne, uh, rather, Johnston's with him. Bounce beats him. Sewer. 
Everything he touches turns to gold for the moment. Carey, Hewitt, Sewer, can he kick another one? Didn't time it as well. Tony Hall's got it, not paid. Ben Harris, it's going to be a ball up. It's 82 to 17, and there's an air of excitement at the bay. They haven't felt this all year, I don't think, down here, Robert. Yes, it's certainly good to be in front of Port Adelaide. Great side that they've been over the years. So any win against Port Adelaide's good haul. Snaps it in, and then over his shoulder. 12-11 now, Glenelg, 1-11 to Port. Tony Hall not quite able to get that ball around. The place would have erupted if he'd have kicked that one as well, Bruce. So with Harris to bring it back in, and with 11 the difference, Johnson sets himself super. Can he do it again, Bruce? Has he got another screw punch in his hip pocket? This is where he kicked the last one. Well, the crowd... Russell Eva doesn't want him to do it, but the crowd are begging him to do it again. He's got the way, Bruce. She's hard. Touched. Touched on the line. <laughs> Who is that man that stopped that magic moment in sport? 12-12 to 111. So oh. Carey, bad luck there, but Porter hang, hang in there, 11-1 behind. Out in front of Paul Plesha. He touches it just before it goes out of bounds, so there'll be a throw in between half forward and the forward pocket. Glenelg kicking with the aid of a fairly strong breeze. But quietened down yesterday, this northerly breeze. Will it do so again this afternoon? The knock back to Holst. High in the air by McDermott. And ben Harris is back there. Handball over the top to Kinnear. Kinnear to Clifford. Clifford going sideways to the outer side. Spoiled away to Holst. Carey. Dummies. Flat punt to the pocket, and Kernhand standing out there. One would wonder why anyone would be standing out there, but Kernahan certainly was. He, you would have thought he was way out of the play. Harris in the goal square, recovering ahead of him. A miss kick. Well, we shouldn't credit any of a miss kick to Carey. He's liable to have tried to kick that flat punt to him. He kicks offline, through from behind. Glenelga 12-13, Port Adelaide 1-11. 2-2 to Stephen Kernahan. He kicked the first two goals, one of the match. Then, of course, he went from the field on a stretcher. And now he's back in the thick of it. So the Bay's doing all the attacking with the breeze. Harris. Duthy Anderson takes off early. Philetic waits down. Anderson thumps on. Marshall. McDermott. Duthy on the run. Well tackled by Harvey. T too long, Duthy. Eckerman barges his way through. Duthie's got him and it's going to be a ball up. It's a good, strong bit of play there. I have an Eckerman, very strong player. Player hitting him then before he was tackled. Still held the ball. Carey with his left hand to Ebert. To the boundary line. Maynard. Very good evasion too. Kicks high. He's lower to float right out of bounds. The wind catches it, but it doesn't quite. Players are down. Kernhand feeling his head. Duthy tackled high. He'll take a free kick on the half forward line. Duthy's had a reasonable game. This is his seventh kick, but he's competed very hard. His name to start at centre half forward didn't, of course. Stephen Kernahan waiting for the ball to come in. Duthy's timed it well. He's kicked it strongly, but are behind. So 12 14 to 1 11. Duthie has just the point. This is a very big lead, Robert. It's 11 goals, three. Ben Harris. We're only just over 10 minutes into the quarter. Harris kicking the outer side now. I'm a bit amazed he didn't do it earlier. Spoiled away by Johnston. The handball by McGuinness. Finds McDermott. And Chris McDermott really sewing the game up for Glenelg. Piles it through the centre. 13-14 now the Bays, 1-11 to Port Adelaide. That kick in by Harris, Duthie competing well again, and then the handball by McGuinness to McDermott. And McDermott, who hasn't kicked many goals this year, made no mistake, and the Bays go to 13-14 to 1-11. Peter Carey and Russell Johnston. Carey has really lifted himself. Johnston hits him in the head. Clifford, out of side space out there, Hughes leading into it, spoiled away though, 
by Stringer. Maynard tapping it out of bounds. So it'll be a throw in between half back and centre wing, out of side. The wind steaming straight down the ground, I think, Bruce. Carey and Hughes. Belton with a run of it. Salisbury takes it off him to Wayne Stringer. Holst. Ebert with him. Two strong bodies. Holst recovers. It's a powerful kick to Kernahan. Couldn't take it. Harris. Still Harris. We've got him. Well done, 12 tree. Also Anderson. Anderson gets rid of it in a hurry. He wants Johnston. Holst. Now Anderson again. Oh, McDermott did well to Holst. Holst will go to the goal square. And there's Kernahan on his own. He's got it. What a kick by Holst. He knew it. Stephen Kernahan is about to put this ball into the school. And he goes. He's kicked three. It's 14-14 to 111. You wouldn't believe that, Robert, if I told you that last night. Um, that was well done by David Holstein. His ability to pull the ball back under his arm. He was almost committed to the kick. And then as the Port Adelaide player came across him, he then just pulled it back in, evaded, then controlled the kick right to the square. And of course, with a player with the marking ability of Kernahan, there was no worries. Carey and Kennedy. Kennedy may be just. Huppets, who's tried very hard all day, and is going to be a ball up. Well, what can they do from here, Robert? Keep trying, Bruce. Port Adelaide have got to get something together. Something's got to work eventually, I suppose. Marshall gets it out to McDermott. Dives on top of it. Gives it back to Marshall. Wayne Stringer's done a pretty good job on that half-back line today. It's balled away well then from half, at half-back by Russell. Doofy gets it forward to Kidney. Kidney goes for the goal with a wobbly kick. Didn't time it at all. It was certainly the right kick he played. But unfortunately, he didn't time it. So they've scored a behind now, Glenelg. It's a bit of a break from their goal-scoring spree. So it's 14-15 to 111. And they've kicked five, six to a point in this term. Anderson with a quick handball. Dwayne Russell. Robertson with a run of it. Now Salisbury. Showed some strength there. He is afraid of nothing, Bruce. And another man with the same attributes, Ivan Eckerman to Ben Harris. Anderson leading. Takes possession. And just handballs it on into the space. Milan Philetic has been pretty quiet. Mind you, he hasn't had many chances up forward. Hangs onto the ball. Trying to run away with it. The attack is too strong. A free kick to Chris McDermott on the half back line. He's having a big quarter, McDermott. Paul gets rid of Russell. Kennedy comes in. Paul Pleasure, who's playing across half back, short to Clifford. Clifford on quickly. Wants some movement up forward. Huppets almost. Should have got a free kick and he will. As Robert said earlier, Ray Huppets knows no fear. In fact, he's not too sure he's got the free kick at the moment. He left that behind. He wasn't even interested in the free kick. Ray Huppets. Better kick. He's really put his leg into that one. Much better. Johnston can't complete the mark. Had his hands on it. Folletti can't pick it up. In fact, nobody can pick it up because they all fall on top. So it'll be a bounce down. Straight in front of the port goal. 20 metres out. Will Danny Hughes go this time? I think Russell Johnston will compete this time. With Peter Carey. Carey just tapping it down. Kicked away by Walsh. Hughes takes it. Puts it onto his boot. And kicks the goal. Tim Evans just grabs hold of Michael Farquhar and pulls him out of the road. It was worth the chance. The umpire lets, the ball, lets it play. So Port Adelaide, second goal comes on the board. 17 minutes into the third quarter. They're 2-11, trailing Glenelg, 14-15. That's only the second goal Danny Hughes, in fact, has kicked in league football. This is his third season. S. Evans grabbing hold of Farquhar as that ball was going through. Farquhar wanted the free kick, not paid. So it's Dexter Kennedy on the ball for Port Adelaide. 
against Carey. Kennedy just knocking it forward towards Clifford. Marshall picks it up. Clifford gets it back. Harvey leaves it behind. Everyone's leaving it behind, so the umpire said, let's start again. Kennedy getting a bit of a movement at the ball. And then bangs it forward to no one in particular. Harvey, slow on the reflex, gets a free kick though for in the back. So he's at the centre of the ground. Port Adelaide, maybe at last, starting to make a bit of a movement towards the goal. Fisted away in defence by Walsh. McFarlane, McGuinness. To the pocket, Kernahan on a lead. Harris got a bad bounce. Just missed. Had Sewer short, but went the right way. 14 16 to 2 11. So Kernahan's kicked 3 3. So things just not going right for Port Robert, even the bounce of the ball at times. It's more noticeable, of course, when you're not in front. You need everything going for you. You can. That kick really dropping into the breeze. Kennedy making a yard. Takes the mark to centre wing. Philetic. A bit tall for Maynard when he gets the opportunity to compete in the air there. Eckerman coming up from defence, gets it on quickly. Has to scramble at the last second. Harvey drops the ball. Umpire on the blind side didn't notice. Clifford picks up the crumbs. Into half forward. Nice take, Robertson. Huppets. Just quietly forward, Johnston. Well done, Port Adelaide. There's a semblance of a bit of something happening out there now, Bruce. I think they're trying to get the ball to, to go. You never know whether Porter is stepping it up or Glenelg perhaps just slackening off a little bit. Johnson playing a centre half forward for the moment, Robert. Peter Carey's very tight. He's gone down to full forward. Johnston has missed it. So 2-12 to 14-16. Johnston, one of Port Adelaide's very best though today. Not that they've had a lot, I don't suppose, but he really did dominate the ruck in the early stages. Well, they wouldn't want to let Port Adelaide kick two or three goal on them, Bruce, and put themselves within ten goals in three-quarter time, because there's a definite possibility that to kick ten goals. Kernahan with a fine mark to Marshall. To half forward, Eckerman running across. He doesn't take no more from Ebert. Sewer. Ebert hasn't got the pace to stay up. McDermott, 12 trees, a deadly kick. Oh, what a magnificent evasion, Leon, 12 three. He walked through there. Just evaded, made it look an absolutely simple play. 15-16 to 2-12. That's 2-2 to 12-3. Graham Campbell must be delighted with his form. Russell Ebert just lacked the pace there and he couldn't hold his feet. And McDermott did well again. He's playing exceptionally well. And as Robert said, 12-3's movement was superb. Russell Ebert, a lot of worries at centre-half back for him. Robertson to Hughes, coming in quickly was Maynard, he gets the free kick for around the neck as Hughes hits him high, McFarlane to Holst, working hard and across the centre, Ebert's got to be with him, he's just letting him run around, he, the kick into the fullback line, Eckerman can't hold it, goes through his hands and Harris can hold it, Eckerman says it's my kick, he says no it's Harris's and he's Ivan probably saying I thought I nearly marked it, You're, well oh, Bruce take over after that. <laughs> Russell at set a half back. 15 metres against McDermott. So 15 16 to 2 12. All the spite's gone out of the game. But the Bays have got such a big lead. Johnston's giving Port Adelaide a little bit at set a half forward. He's much too tall, of course, uh, for Wayne Stringer. In fact, Gavin Walsh has come across on him. Now Wayne Stringer with one hand. Salisbury's done a good job back there. Tony Hall to Kernahan. Just a little one to cue it. It'll bounce out. Just couldn't quite control it enough, Stephen Kernahan. The idea was there. Bay's really running at the moment. Kennedy dropping back into defence. Leaves the play. Anyway, Kernahan tripped over. No free kick. Kinnear. He's tackled when he doesn't got possession of the ball. So the umpire not favouring either side. He's just letting anything go at the moment. As long as they're making an effort to go for the ball. Or well, someone is. There's a couple that aren't. Kernahan. Hitting it. Fairly wide to Huppets. It's a good screw punt too. Back in defence is Gavin Walsh. He gives it across to Michael Farquhar. Farquhar with a very long kick to Kernahan. 
Shanahan seems to be getting on his own a lot at the moment. Tony Hall, Dexter Kenley's probably playing a little bit too deep in the defensive action. McDermott. McDermott having a, a good game. Tony Hall. Short to Holst or is it McGuinness? Either one. Just got in one another's row for the moment and it probably was enough to put Holst off. I think the thing was the kick wasn't quite right for either of them and they both did leave it and uh, neither of them could quite make it. Carey in front, lovely knock over the top. But Eckerman's there just to save for Port Adelaide. Gives him some respite as he taps it out of bounds. It'll be Carey and Dexter Kennedy again, right in the forward pocket. The with a strong breeze at their back. Paul Plesha can't get it away. Holst with the ball, flies out of his hands to Paul Plesha, to Huppets. Huppets into the space. John Harvey, got a bit of toe too, the same man. Taps it on, only as far as Marshall. He evades, he runs about 30 metres, then kicks it to half forward to David Holst. Russell Ebert just not with him, anywhere near him, Bruce. No, David Holst, miles out on his own in this term. He's got Hewitt in the pocket. In fact, he's got him at centre half forward now. Now Kinnear's going to pick him up. 11th kick for Holst. It's a pretty strong kick, Bruce. He probably thought he could just about get it. Carey shoved out of the way. Kennedy takes the mark. Big Dexter takes a mark, right in the goal square. Holster's kick was a long one. Now Curtis, he's had a very quiet game. Wants Dwayne Russell, young kidney over the back. Huppets. Jim McDermott's football in this turn's been terrific, Robert. 15 metres against Dwayne Russell. He's very emotional, Dwayne Russell. I don't know why he's doing this. Like, it's not good for a young player to be acting like that. He's very, very careless. It's doesn't augur well for his future as a good player. He looked very, very promising as a youngster. Another 15 metres because Huppets wouldn't get out of the road. Just not interested, Huppets. He's just disgraced it. Gee, Russell even must be disappointed with this. That's, that, that is just ridiculing the, the whole team and the club, that sort of behaviour. It's a goal. So McDermott's got two. And it's 16, 16 to 2, 12, and I suppose it's easy to rubbish somebody who's tried hard all day, but Ray Hubbard wouldn't feel all that good at the moment because he's cost Port Adelaide a goal, and in the long run, who knows, when it comes down to percentage at the end of the year, which it may well do, every goal will count. Russell Ebert just having a few words with Ray, um, Ray Hubbard there. The whistle blew and Ray took no notice. It's a very good kick. 16-16, 2-12, bad bounce. But just things are going so well for Glenelg that it landed in Tony Hall's hands. Hewitt. Sewer takes off. Oh, McGuinness did that brilliantly. Anderson, yes, it was an excellent tackle by Russell. In fact, Russell's got rid of McGuinness behind the play, and it's on again. It's on behind the play, it's in a half forward. Now Hewitt underneath this, and he takes a strong mark. Plays on, looks for Salisbury. Salisbury tries to tap it on. Belton goes in strongly. Well done. Very well done, Bruce. Then tackled him when he was on the ground. The game allowed to flow on to Clifford while they're all arguing half the team. Clifford's going to get himself a kick and a tax full forward. Gives Tim Evans one of his few opportunities. Farquhar in front, though. And then comes up quickly and then goes down twice as quickly. <laughs> Tim Evans throws him out of the road. The little boys are full of coffers and Farquhar kicks one of his prodigious screwies. Well done. Good mark by Kennedy. It's his second good mark this quarter. He's been on the interchange bench for most of the day. It's good also to see Tony Hall, Robert, trying fairly to uh, interfere when he was running the wrong way. Now Hughes. Hughes has had a, an upsetting day, was reported. Built into the pocket. Farquhar and Evans, and it's going to be a ball in. Michael Farquhar is enjoying a very good season at fullback. He's a very good kick. It's always handy to have a good kick at fullback, Bruce. The opportunities are not that great at fullback, and if you work hard there, and if you've got a bit of skill on the kick, very important part of the fullback's armour. A la Colin Casey, Robert, over the years. Yes, he's been a great kick. Philetic. Left foot snap. Poor old Ports. Things just are not going right. Out of bounds on the full. Be a day that um, they'll want to forget. 
Unless they kick 15 in the last quarter, then I don't want to remember. <laughs> it's hard to see it happening, isn't it? It is at the moment. The way Glenelg are playing, they're, they're too good. In too many places. Their team plays just far superior. It's a very high kick. Reaches centre wing. <laughs> Kennedy can't hold his, himself upright. As Kernhan takes the mark, it's a loose handball, Stephen Kernhan to Gavin Walsh. Gives it back to Kernhan. Oh, that's a good pick up, big fellow. In the centre half forward, Carey in front. Off hands to Sewer. 12 3 can Sewer gives it out quickly to Duthy. Duthy to McGuinness is on his natural leg. He's only got to kick it straight. It went straight and fast. And McGuinness pummels the goal. His second for the match. 17 16 to Glenelg. 2 12 to Port Adelaide. Some great handball there. Ralph Sewer's had an exceptional game today. As Robert said earlier, he's kept very cool when all the pressure was on early. His handball was first class. Duthy involved with it again. McGuinness has always been a lovely kick on the run. He's bleeding very badly from the mouth at the moment. 17-16 to 2-12. Dexter Kennedy and Stephen Kernahan. Kernahan hitting it with the back of his hand. Just backwards towards Tony Hall. Robin Kidney just kicks a short kick up to half forward. McGuinness, a nice half volley. That's the way to go for it. It's copybook stuff. Around his body towards McFarlane. I don't know what he's doing up here. He must want to get a goal. Hewitt over the top with very good reflex. Holst misses the body of, of Hall. That's bad play. Very loose play indeed, David Holst. And so Port Adelaide into attack from defence. Kennedy and Kidney. McFarlane. Hewitt. Sewer wants it short. Now McGuinness. Ebert got pushed in the back, no free kick, should have got one. So should have the Glenelg player, so there was definitely a square up there, it would have paid that in the middle of the ground probably. There's going to be a free kick to Port Adelaide. Dwayne Russell's going to get it on this occasion. And in fact, I think he should have got the free kick, or the free kick should have been paid back in defence to Port Adelaide in the first place. So Dwayne right. Russell, outer side wing. Doothy, it's too tall. Ever since Coach Campbell's placed him on the wing, Bruce, he's been a great value to them. They've been able to kick up that wing knowing that they've got some marking power up on that side of the ground and here he is this time saving in a defensive play. Carey in the middle, 12 tree. Oh, he's missed one, Robert. On the full, on his wrong leg. He miscued. He's kicked 2-2 two, 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 and one out of bounds on the full now, Leon, 12 tree. So Eckerman to bring it back in. 24 to 118. Johnston came around to the front. Harvey. Wayne Stringer who's played well. Well done, Danny Hughes, over the back. McFarlane's been superb today. Johnston's got it. There were two big men there, Johnston or Kennedy. They could have taken their pick. Johnston's been a good tryer. Marshall and Harvey just run into one another. Shepherding, quite right. David Marshall just propped himself in front of John Harvey. Felton to Johnston. That was a beautiful kick to Philetic. He pushed in the back first, just a little gentle one to make sure the player stayed out on the road. But the kick was perfect, there was no need, he could have just reared up and taken that. His height was far too much for Peter Maynard anyway. 20 metres out, straight in front. The kick's a very good one. Straight through, Port Adelaide's third goal. Land for Lettick, 3-12 now Port Adelaide, 17-16 to Glenelg. That ball starting with Russell Johnson on the half-bat flank. Very good kick in towards Philetic. Philetic, as uh, Robert said, just with a little shove early, but then he took the mark and kicked very straight from about 35 metres out. Punched the kick hard into the breeze. So Port get their second goal into the breeze for the term, but the Bays have managed to kick eight with it. So it's 17-16 to 3-12. Anilk in very good fettle. Stephen Kernahan played very well since coming back onto the ground. He's up against Russell Johnston. Johnston puts his hand on it, but only as far as Marshall. He nearly misses it, but he manages to just get a foot to it. Overrun by Paul Plesha and kicked forward by Kinnear to Hughes. Hughes plays on quickly towards Philetic. The Milk defence is a little bit loose at the moment. They're all running up in the centre, chasing kicks. Allows Clifford to go to full forward. From behind, Dexter Kennedy. Too tall. Ray Huppert's feeling his head. <laughs> so Dexter
Six to Kennedy now with an opportunity for Port Adelaide's fourth goal. And he's kicked it, so four goals, 12 now to Port Adelaide, 17-16 to Glenelg, and Dexter Kennedy kicks his first goal for the match. Start of the final quarter, Glenelg with the Bays leading 17-16 to Port 4-12. Port coming home with the breeze, but they need to kick 15 goals to win. Carey with a tap, Harvey, McDermott, McGuinness, Anderson copped a high one there. Marshall got rid of it very quickly. Belton. Now Folletic. Folletic who kicked one of Port's four goals for the match in that third term. Johnston. Anderson from centre half forward. Left foot. Good kick. Goal. Well done. 5 12 to 17 16. So Port. As far as playing time is concerned, Robert have kicked two goals within about 30 seconds because they kicked the goal after the siren at three-quarter time. Yes, they've they certainly lifted their effort at the ball then. Now, Tim Anderson's been very, very quiet on that centre wing. In fact, Chris Duthie's had the better of him all day. But on that occasion, he got into that half-forward line. They've worked it to him. Belton, Philatic, all put a bit together to finally see Anderson running in to score the goal. And they've got to do that another 15 times. Can the Magpie do it? Kennedy... A couple of good marks in the third quarter. Peter Carey, pretty tired. He kicked a spectacular goal. Belton, McFarlane's been a big winner all day. He's a terrific player, John McFarlane. So the kick by McFarlane to half forward. Over the top. Curtis getting back first. Is out of bounds. Sue got up high then, Robert. That's the second time he's done that for the day, when he's really got up there and not completed the mark. So it's out of bounds. Carey hitting it forward. It's cleared by Port Adelaide up to Ward Stringer. Wayne Stringer's done a pretty good job at centre-half. Back in the lacking height. Curtis, dis not Curtis, Holtz is dispossessed. It goes to half-forward quickly. Knocked away then by Walsh. Kinnear with a very quick and high kick. Salisbury and Huppets. Huppets jumped early. Salisbury played very well. He's handled the rough stuff well today. He's kept his concentration. That main art to Doofy. As Robert said, he's been a very good player. Anderson's had some moments on him. Looks for Sewer. Curtis Hoy did it well. Sewer, he never let Sewer get a run at that ball. He ran across in front of him and then stopped on him just when Sewer was about to make his big leap. Now Belton. Walsh, missed kick by Belton, gave Johnson very little hope. But Gavin Walsh, just backward of half back. Players directing him to the outer side. Very strong kick it is too to Carey. Carey trying to juggle the mark. Car Curtis coming in. Sewers just letting himself down a bit at the moment. He's dropped his level of competitiveness. Wayne Stringer. Free kick was paid, but McInnes allowed to play on. And he goes up to David Marshall, playing a little bit wide in the centre of the stage. Away he goes to centre half forward. Kidney in front. Oh, Ivan Eckman <laughs> straight on top of him. Kidney coming down and taking that half volley. Eckman at full pace and he just drifted across the front of him. It's a short kick to Carey. It's balled away by Clifford. Might have hurt Carey actually. Not a good kick. McGuinness, his handball not good. Ebert in there. Handles it to himself after being pushed in the back. So he'll take a free kick. Very quiet day for Russell today, as with many other Port Adelaide players. So Eva from the back pocket, 15 metres against McDermott. It's got Eckerman short. Ivan playing in his 150th. We we'll certainly forget the score in a hurry. Short to Kennedy. Paul got loose players at the moment. And Dexter lets loose with a long one. Evans in the centre. Long handball out by Robertson. Johnston. Evans. Still with Evans. Mark Hewitt's been an excellent player. So is Michael Farquhar. Carey and Kennedy. And both jostle with one another. Now it's Harvey. Harvey from half forward. Wants Johnston. 
Belt, snapped by Belton. Huppert's getting underneath it, but he's going to beat him over. And out of bounds on the foot. Farquhar to bring it back in. So Michael Farquhar giving a few instructions. Tim Evans coming back. That's the hardest he's worked for a while with that last bit of play there, Tim Evans. Ball from behind. The Hughes is too tall. Very big man, Danny Hughes. Should get this distance too. It's a good kick. Peter Carey one a lot further out than this. No. A bit tired in the legs. High in the air. Touched off hands. Paletic kicks it quickly. And the umpire says, goal. Just sneaks inside the post. So Milan Paletic kicks Port Adelaide sixth goal. They're 6 12, trailing Glenelg 17 16. 2 1 now to Paletic. It's a long kick by Hughes. Paletic believed that he'd marked the ball. It's touched on the way through. Quickly snapped it over his shoulder and was going to be touch and go all the way, but it just snuck in for a goal. So Port Adelaide 6 12 to 17 16. So Peter Carey, Dexter Kennedy. Dexter knocks it forward. Clifford gets a bad bounce. Kidney's having a bit of trouble picking it up. Kinnear takes possession to half forward. Curtis is up in the forward line. He props in front, gets a free kick. There's McFarlane cannons into him. So Stephen Curtis from centre half forward, about 50 to 60 metres from goal. Robert, they've kicked, uh, Porter kicked four of the last five goals in this match. I know the Bays have got a huge lead, but this percentage has been whittled down all the time. Stephen Curtis with the screw punt, just low. Not a good kick for goal. We've seen him on another occasion, Bruce, earlier in the year when he wasn't um, kicking too well, so he kicks it behind. Far class short to Walsh. He's got Stringer wide if he wanted him. Salisbury and Philetic jostle for one another. Philetic spoils away. McFarlane. Philetic did it well. Good tackle though by Kidney. Curtis is very strong to up. It's well done. It's a goal. Just snuck in. So Huppets has kicked to second. And it's 7-13 to 17-16. It's three goals, one Port Adelaide have kicked this quarter. They're certainly making full use of the breeze. And they keep up the same rate. Seven minutes and 21 minutes they will have kicked nine. And then in the last 10, 10 minutes will they be able to kick another six. We'll wait and see. The Nils are not playing with the same degree of enthusiasm as they did earlier. Kennedy and Kernahan in the ruck together. Kerry having a spell. Kennedy won it. Clifford. Johnston. Walsh. Oh, good mark. Interfered with Johnston just a little early in that exchange, but in the end did it very well. He kicks to the outer side. Kernahan in front. Off hands. Well read Mark Hewitt. Wayne Stringer to McDermott. It's a better play by Glenelg. Very good kick too to McGuinness. Oops. Intercepted though by Sewer. Over the top to McGuinness. He can't take possession. It's out of bounds. I think if Ralph Sewer left that alone, it would have dropped right on Tony McGuinness's tummy, Bruce. But he was coming in too fast to be able to slow down. Kerry will do the ruck work. Kennedy comes in for Port Adelaide. With Kernahan back across the centre wing. Kerry uses his big body. Holst just taps it forward to McGuinness. McGuinness with a snap. Harris and also Dwayne Russell. Russell's kicked towards the centre wing. Maynard and Anderson. Still Maynard. Anderson over the top. It's going to be a ball up. Greg Anderson worked very hard there. So did Maynard. We bounced down on centre wing. Kernahan's coming in with Kennedy to compete for the bounce down. Kennedy with his left hand to Clifford. He can't take it. It's given out by McDermott to Maynard. Maynard just puts the ball on the ground. Then handballs it out to Clifford. Clifford with his left foot on this occasion. A good kick too, 50 metres. It's brought away by Farquhar, not taking any chances. Picks it up and handballs it wildly into the space. But Belton's there first. Into the pocket. Curtis under it, but Walsh, he's taken some great saving marks since he's come onto the ground. Kernahan and Kennedy, good duel there, free kick to Huggins. Peter Maynard's a loose 
at times. Bruce's knees just takes his eye off the ball, I think. Clifford getting a lot of kicks to the goal square. Evans and Farquhar. Well, Farquhar's having a magic day. Things are just right now. Hewitt will go to Holst, and they're going to be in here. Holst has been given a lot of latitude by Russell Ebert. Now, Sewell wants it in the pocket. Waits for it to bounce. Might have been better off just making that extra effort and getting to it. And it's going to be a ball in. Yes, the ball wouldn't carry to that breeze. Bruce he just kicked it a little bit softly. Then David Holsey didn't really punch it hard enough to reach Ralph Sewell. So Johnston and Carey. Bays haven't scored a goal in this term. Sewer just dropped it. Not penalised. David Marshall, he's had a good game. Tony McGuinness missed it. Stephen Clifford, who's working very hard now. Russell across to Puppets. Oh, Salisbury's had a very good game. He's opened it up for himself. McGuinness. 12 feet is loose if McGuinness wants him. Not now. Too late. Now McDermott's at centre half forward. He didn't take it. Now Hulse. Can he kick the goal? Left foot. Oh, he's got a powerful leg, but he's missed. It's a behind. So 17 17 to 7 13. Probably the mistake there. McGuinness has kicked not quite the spot on. Yes, the first goal for the quarter now to Glenelg. The kick across to the centre was on on that occasion. Had to be played. Unfortunately, not accurate, but David Holst still evaded Will. Recovered the ball. Ben Harris up the centre of the ground. Kernahan settles himself underneath it. He can't take it. Dermot can't take it. And then finally, falling on top of the ball, Russell Johnston. Johnston coming in again to see whether he can get Port Adelaide started with Kernahan. Kernahan hitting it forward. Picked up and kicked away by Kidney. Just too high for Ben Harris. Jerry resting on the back of big Ben Harris and then just runs it down his arm. Lovely ball control. That's what we all come to see in Australian football. A little bit better than what we saw in the first quarter. Through the goals by Peter Carey. So the Melbourne 18-17. Port Adelaide, 7.30. Yes, Coonerhan going for the knock there. Kidney's played well. He hasn't had a lot of kicks, but what he's done has been very good. That's his 10th kick as he punched it towards Kerry. Kerry's mark was tremendous, as Robert said. Just running it down with a one hand, controlling it and goaling. That's his second goal to the big fellow. And Glenelg's first for the quarter. Stephen Curtis in a bit of trouble. at centre half forward in the hands of the train. Stephen Coonerhan. Russell Johnston. Neither of them touch it. Johnston takes off the ground, gives it to Clifford. Clifford comes backwards between two Glenelg players to full forward. Evans just pushing Farquhar out of the road. And just when he thinks he's going to get it on his tummy, Farquhar sticks an arm up and punches it out of bounds. Been a great game for Farquhar. Stephen Curtis has just been heavily strapped. His right hamstring, he's had problems with that hamstring. He's missed a lot of games. There's going to be a body blow for Port if he's going to miss some more. Just been strapped up. So Kernahan and Kennedy. Tapped forward by Walsh. Belton and Maynard. Still with Belton. Clifford. This is his 21st kick. And it's a goal. Well done, Stephen Clifford. He's really tried in this term. So the bomber gets his first goal from his 21st kick. And Port go to 8 13 to Glenelg 18 17. Yes, if Glenelg can maintain this sort of form, Bruce, during the next few games and get themselves really running, no matter how difficult their end-of-year performance is going, um, end-of-year run is, and it's not that difficult if one looks at the teams they have to play, they've got a very good opportunity of playing off in the finals. Johnson and Kernahan, opposed to one another. Kidney got a high tackle and get a free kick. Belton gives it back to him in a hurry. Euphemism for that would be an enthusiastic throwback. <laughs> Carey in the middle. Well done by Hall to Sewer to McGuinness. Oh, goal. Three to McGuinness. 19-17 to 8-13. That's an indication of the team play and how important it is. Of course, someone at the end of the play has to finish it off, and Tony McGuinness did it very well then. But Hall's play to get it onto him was fantastic. And then, of course, 
McGuinness, he's deadly with that left foot, and it's a very difficult angle from where he kicked it then, the wind blowing through the goals. Johnson and Kernahan do it again, 131 to 61. Not much in it, Belton with a quick kick, Hughes has got it. He can kick a long ball, Danny Hughes, he should put this right into the goal square, both Kennedy and Evans in the square. In fact, Tim has been, uh, Tim Evans has been relegated to a forward pocket for the moment. Didn't quite time it, but it's in the square. Kennedy almost, not pay. Philetic tries to get through. Walsh has played superbly. Now Evans, still Evans, smothered by McFarlane. What a game Snout's played, Robert. Oh, terrific game, Bruce. Like his first quarter when he set the game up for Glenelg. There's no, I know they won the toss, but Porter they went to attack a couple of times. Evans missed a couple of goals, but McFarlane been reliable as you like all day. Hughes caught. Evans now Huppets, left foot snap. Didn't balance up, unfortunately, for Port, and he's kicked the point. Huppets has kicked 2-3. He's had a fair few kicks. He's had uh, 17 kicks and two handbooks. So it'll be Michael Farquhar to kick the ball back in when we get it out of the crowd. The game's lost its real tempo at the moment. I know Glenelg aren't really sparking into the play. They did it just a moment ago, but they're not doing it as cons consistently as they were in the uh, first three quarters. Of course, they don't need to in the sense of winning the game, but they need to in the sense of keeping the opposition score down because they need every bit of percentage they can get. Farquhar to the centre. McDermott. Handles on quickly to Wayne Stringer. Stringer into the space ahead of what's well, over the top of. Um, 12 tree it was. Just kicked forward to McDermott. McGuinness. Handballs on. It's a good handball too to Leon 12 tree. 12-3 with a little controlled kick to the left-hand post. The wind didn't curve that at all. And it goes through from behind, and Leon 12-3 kicks his first score for this quarter. He's now kicked two goals, three. Harris, Farquhar just kicked the ball into the centre square, into the breeze. Harris with a similar kick. Clifford. Tony Hall. He went off for a quarter time, but came back after half-time. Maynard with a controlled leg to Marshall. Harvey with him. Bill. Philetic. Philetic's had a few touches. Goes to Kennedy. Walsh with him. Farquhar misses it. Walsh and McFarlane force it to the boundary line. And it's going to be a ball in. Jim McFarlane's enthusiastic. He was there it? again, Bruce. And he was going to get it and got Walsh's road. Walsh knocked him over. So it's out of bounds in the forward pocket for Port Adelaide. There are 70 points behind. Kennedy and Kernahan. Kernahan just knocks it towards his own goal. Finally, it's Hewitt that picks the ball up and he sends out a fairly loose handball to Maynard. Maynard's tackle whilst not in possession. The umpire allows it to just keep going on. And then he's going to bounce it. I think the umpire could have picked a few frees, then he decided just to let it come to its natural conclusion. All players fighting for the ball. Kernahan and Hughes. Hughes with a tap, Clifford. Pretty tight at the moment, Clifford. Looks for a free kick, won't get it, and again a ball in. As Robert said, the tempo's gone. The Bays with this huge lead of 70 points. Such a spiteful game in the first half. And such a one-sided game, really, as well. Stephen Clifford just having a few words to the boundary umpire. I know it's the boundary umpire that reported Danny Hughes. Now Tony Hall. Very short to Holst. Holst has one centre half forward since he went there. High kick to half forward. Marshall takes it and it's out of bounds before he's taken the mark. So it's out of bounds on the full and the free kick to be taken on the half back line for Port Adelaide. John Harvey. Harvey to centre wing. Hughes in front trying to fist it on and does so. Clifford coming through the ball just evades him completely. Kidney gives it on to Hall. Hall with a quick handball to 12th tree. 12th tree with a bit of trouble getting rid of it. Ebert. Evades and then goes through the centre of the ground. Salisbury and McFarlane. I think Salisbury got a call from McFarlane at the last minute because he certainly pulled up. Salisbury recovers and gives the handball to Duthie. And then they'll go off again. Duthie towards 12th tree. 
12 to, to McGuinness. Stephen Curtis in trouble on one leg at the moment with that hamstring problem. McGuinness will kick a long ball. He looks for Carey. Coming in late, Russ. Eckerman to Ebert. To Johnston running for him. Not a good kick by Johnston. He was looking for Clifford. Wayne Stringer, now Anderson. And from centre half forward, he lets loose with a long one. And he's just missed. It's a behind. So Greg Anderson has kicked 1 1 now. And it's 8 15 to 19 18. That was terrific play by Clifford then when he knocked that ball out of the little player's hands. On the beautiful half volley take. And Simons is back on the ground for Glenelg. I missed who went off, Bruce. McDermott to Kidney. Mark Hewitt it was who went off. Holst. Now the chance for Tony Hall. Really puts his leg into the ball too. That was a confident kick. There's no way he was going to miss that kick. He kicks his first goal for the day, Tony Hall. He's kicked one goal, one. So Glenelg have now reached 20 goals. They're 2018, Port Adelaide, eight goals, 15. Very good kick by Tony Hall. Walsh to Holst, and Holst just chipped it away to Hall. Glenelg players were running everywhere, giving him advice, and he just steadied up, and from about 30 metres out, made no mistake. So 2018 now, 8.15. Bounce down's not that straight. Clifford gets a chance, Hubbard's coming through quickly, he's tackled him, ball gets away from him. Clifford can't get away. So there'll be another bounce down. Just towards the Port Adelaide end of the centre. Kernahan still there with Kennedy. Kennedy tapping it forward to Belton. Belton quickly forward to Hughes. Stringer getting back, spoils it away. McFarland always coming from the check side to the attack side. Clears to Holst. Holst into the centre half forward area. Simons runs past it. Good movement there by Kidney as he takes possession. Simons taps it on the hall. Hall, very good evasion on his left foot. And through from behind. Didn't do that too well, Robert, because Sewell was absolutely free at uh, full forward. He only had to kick a little one to him and it would have been a gimme goal. Yes, he certainly under a bit of pressure. He turned quickly, probably panicked a little bit more than he had to. He was a little bit slow on the first occasion, and when he came back, he slowed down. So Harris to bring her back in. Wobbly kick, Port Adelaide out of the five tonight. It's going to be half of them to get back. Doothy. Straight across the ground. But Mark Hewitt, who we thought had gone off, will give him the wrong information there. So Hewitt, centre wing. Go to Simons in the pocket. Poplicia with him. Simons almost got it. Poplicia still with him. Now Simons. Left foot. It's going to go close. Harris is back there to take the mark. I think Carey's very tired, Bruce. It took him all his time to swing his arm at that ball, let alone run his legs to get to it. He's had a big day. So the kick in by Harris to Kennedy. Kennedy with a handball to the Dwayne Russell. Smuggled off his boot. He should have handballed it over the top to Greg Anderson. Still a little error as you learn. Player coming across his leg far too fast. He didn't judge it well then, Dwayne Russell. Tony Hall off, Carl Fedke on. That's a surprise, Robert, because Fedke was limping badly at half-time when he ran, ran back onto the field with the, the team and then went back off. I thought he must have been injured, but they brought him back very late. He's still limping a little bit, Bruce. Huh? Give him a bit of a run to see how his leg feels, probably. Kernahan against Kennedy. Kernahan with a tap. Simons with a handball. McGuinness has got three. Let's have a look. Four. No, no he missed it. Oh, fooled me. So 3-2 to McGuinness. It's a good kick for goal. He's really running into some form, Robert. It went very fast, that kick, didn't it? He hit it hard. He's got a lot of power in those legs. So that's 20-20 to 8-15. Ben Harris to kick the ball in. He's going to come to the grandstand side. That is the western side of the oval. Kernahan in front. Kennedy tapping it on towards Anderson. He gives the handball, but it's only intercepted. It is intercepted, rather. By Duthy, Sewer, Simons, goal. It's Tony Simons, especially when he gets around those goals. He's a very, very good kick, and he's finally kicked his first goal. And they're 21-20 now, Glenelg, to 8-15. Duthie's touch was very good then on the centre wing. He held up the kick, 
Sewer did well too. He was, looked like he was going to play on and try and kick the goal himself, but he disguised it. He waited for Simons to provide the run, and he did. And Simons on the run has always been a really good kick, and he made no mistake. So the Bays have steadied up, Robert, after Port made a little bit of a run at them at the beginning of the quarter. Kernahan and Dexter Kennedy. Kennedy knocking it on towards Clifford. Clifford plays on as he gets the free kick. Straight to the goal square. Evans in front. Spoiled away by Farquhar. Covers quickly. Huffett's coming around. Evans goes to Shepherd. Misses everybody. And then Huffett lets him down even further by kicking the ball out of bounds on the full. So Ray Huppert has kicked two goals, three, and one out of bounds on the full. Canelga 21-20, Port 8-15, and the percentage will be very, very handy, Bruce. Yes, and with it, look like, it looks like it might go right down to the last game now, the final five situation with Port North and Glenelga all so close. Percentages could be the vital thing at the end of the year. High one by McFarlane, Kernahan in the centre with Kennedy, Hughes missed it, Anderson, still with Anderson, certainly far from Port Adelaide's worst plays, tried very hard, into the pocket and again a ball in. In the pocket, so Johnston and Kernahan. It's going to be tough now for Port Adelaide to come back after this, they've got three tough games in front of them. McGuinness, still with McGuinness, over the top. Maynard. Toothy provides some run. Punches it hard and long to Marshall. Marshall to centre half forward. Carey. Kidney. Oh, he should have got rid of it quicker. He wanted to go to Sewer. Now Robertson. Now McDermott. Now Holston. Now goal. Through it goes. All too easy. 2-2 two -two to Holst. 22-20 to 8-15. Graham Campbell, they said, won 25 goals at three-quarter time. Well, his players aren't going to let him down by much. They're 22 now. Series of handballs then. Kidney, had he got it onto his boot earlier, would have found Sewer on his own, but eventually it got to Holst. And Holst, who's had a great game at centre-half forward on Russell Ebert. Kicked his second. It's 152 to 63. Kennedy and Kernahan again in the ruck together. Kennedy with a tap. Wayne Stringer's had a very good game. So is Mark Hewitt. So is David Holst. In fact, it'll be hard to find a Glenelg player who hasn't been a star. Carey. From the back, Hughes. 12 3 over the, no, Marshall rather, over the top to Kidney. Kidney's an exciting prospect. Well, it's a good kick to Kernahan. Now, Duthie's running for him. Kernahan's going to take a long shot so good that time just bouncing in it's going to be a ball in 22 20 to 8 15 the bay set it up in that vicious first half and they did 9 9 to 1 10 it really was all over red rover at half time mcginnis now clifford clifford the biggest kick getter for port philetic with him as maynard it's going to be a ball in 22-28-15, 152 to 63. The Bays have got to play Sturt at the Bay next week. And Port have got to play in the double header against Nord at Football Park. Kernahan easily. Belt weaves his way out of it. Maynard did well. Salisbury. Stringer. Oh, they're confident. He was almost going to go to McFarland at right angles. Decided to go to Sewer. The options are plenty at the moment. McGuinness running. That's where Sue is going to go. And he's got him. McGuinness is a long, long kick. Going to go short to Simons. Simons not quite. Port Adelaide desperately trying through. Dwayne Russell. And it's out of bounds. So 152 to 63. It's going to be a bitter pill for Russell even and Port Adelaide to swallow tonight. They so desperately wanted to do well at the bay. And oh, what a year it's been for Graham Campbell now. After all the trauma of those first seven weeks. Ebert with a little one to Robertson. Left footer. Hughes. I think everybody's just waiting for the siren now. Kernahan's dropped back. But Hughes has been able to get over his head. 
Salisbury missed it. That's about his first mistake for the day. Philetic rode the bump. Kicks it round his body. Huppets has got it. Snapped by Huppets. Johnston. They've got him. Walsh. Started on the interchange bench. Came on when Stephen Kernahan was carried from the ground. A lot of people inside the fence. Siren only seconds away. Fetke from the back. He's got it. Big car. Not all that good a kick, but it won't matter. Kernahan. McFarlane. He's got a paddock. One bounce. Two. Oh, not a good kick. Russell. We'll go to Philetic. Now, Philetic's got Curtis. No, I won't even get to Philetic, unfortunately, for Porter. I was going to say he had Curtis completely on his own in the pocket. Curtis on one leg, unfortunately, for Port at the moment. Philadelphia looks tired. Not too happy. So Kernahan and Kennedy again. Kernahan still jumping. McDermott. Hewitt. Oh, good handle on the up to McDermott. He tucks it under his arm. One bounce. He's got Sewer. Ralphie's a good kick on the run normally. Decides to go with a long handle to McGuinness. It was too long in the end. McGuinness' snap is a very good one. He's loving it. 23-20 to 8-15. 15 goals, 5 the difference. Well, Sewell could have probably kicked it himself. McDermott's pickup was excellent. And he made it to Sewer. And Sewer's handball was very strong. Nearly knocked McGuinness over. But he had the skill to kick the goal. Johnston and Kernahan. It's a late finish at the bay. Kidney. Still with Kidney. Fedke and Clifford, it's going to be a ball up. Well, a game that created so much tension, excitement, passion, I suppose, in that first half has just died now. Oh, Salisbury did that well. Free kick against him, siren sounds, and the Bays have had a victory they will remember forever. 20, 158 to Port Adelaide, 8 goals, 15, 63. Russell even must be wondering what this coaching business is all about. And Graham Campbell, after being sacked early in the year, is all of a sudden the mayor of the Glenelg after the Bays have put themselves within strike of playing in the major round. Thank you. 